But whatever you do, the key is not to pick the right thing. The key is to do the consistent thing. Because your first blog post or your first podcast episode is not going to be perfect. It's not going to have all the answers because not until you do 20, 50 podcasts or write that many blog posts or do so many interviews on podcasts will you really start to get into your groove. And I think that's where people make the biggest mistake is that they're afraid to pick because they're not going to be perfect at it. So they pick nothing. Lawsome, the podcast for law firms, powered by Consult Webs. Welcome back to Lawsome, the only podcast for law firms that has gone from selling on the corner to the corner office. We're here to inform, educate, and entertain the legal community on the latest in legal marketing and law firm development. I am Jake Sanders. He's Paul Julius. And together, we probably have a criminal record longer than a city bus. Yeah, man. That's why we do what we do. I know. We just knew so many lawyers. It just made sense. <laughs> it's cost My, effective. Well, it's better than selling on the corner, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are we selling? Speaking of, let's let's tell them what's in the baggie here that we're about to get, hand, slide to them. All right. Shh. Here we go. I got, um, I think, well, here's what we're holding. <laughs> All right. On the show today, we're talking about covering your assets. First, with an article from Neil Patel. And then we chat with Lynn Elioff about the ins and outs of business operations for law firms. And then we turn the intensity up to 11 with five questions we ask everyone. Pull up a plate. It's the Hot Takes Buffet. The article today is entitled How Not to Break the Law While Marketing. Oh, if, only, <laughs> if only we had seen this before we started down our path of criminal uh, we criminal are activities. just straight criminals marketing yeah. without a license oh. i was i was arrested at a young age yeah um That's advertising it. without a license intent to sell yeah intent to distribute <laughs> marketing materials <laughs> we joke uh but who doesn't joke is adria saracino over there at neilpatel.com who wrote this article uh it's a barn burner um, Paul, we were reviewing it and Paul was like, yeah, this is long. I, um, I was scrolling for a surprising amount of time. Super comprehensive. There is a lot to cover. Lawyers would probably be like, yep, that's about standard. Uh, you know, how long does it have to be? It's 40 times as long as it needs to be. Um, because if you don't cover your assets, they're going to come and chomp them. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start with Adria's um, intro, and then we'll go over the couple of um, instances she helps uh, the audience figure out how to not break the law while marketing. So she starts, the internet is a great force for democracy, industry, the spread of information, and free speech. Okay, let's see where this goes. It's also a breeding ground for plagiarism, copyright infringement, and libel. Uh-oh. Uh, add into the <laughs> welcome to Twitter. <laughs> Boom, bam, bam. Uh, add into the mix a very slow moving government that not so long ago was calling the internet a series of tubes. And it's difficult to grasp just what the law is to predict what it will be in the near future and to avoid stepping over legal lines. Altogether, this makes for a challenging online marketing environment, one in which it's hard to know when you're being savvy and innovative or when you're about to be slapped with a major fine or worse. Um, it's so interesting because I haven't thought about this for a long time because I'm so obsessed with creating my own content, with writing my own things. Um, I don't even spend time thinking about this stuff because I've just thought a long time ago, it's better to just not even pretend uh, or borrow or think that you know where things came from. It's better to just create your own. So, um, but man, Lynn talks about it. This article is awesome. It's something very important that uh, marketers, no matter where you are, need to be thinking about. Um, but this is specifically more towards starting a business, thinking of these things before you get in um, and losing all your money. Um, I thought it was a great piece. I think there's so much here that you need to think about. My hot take is 
spend time creating your own content and you don't have to worry about this stuff, you know? Um, but that's my, that's my quick and dirty, you know, for this, mm. um, for, for more information, go to the interview. <laughs> I can't talk about it. <laughs> my my parole I officer. I yeah, they're specific looking at me right now. Instructions. Mm. Um, so the things that that I like that I think um, our listeners are going to run into probably a little bit more frequently um, than some of the stuff that that's geared in here towards people starting a business, maybe starting a business online. Um, this is something that we've run into uh, as a as a company that does provide web services and stuff mm -hmm. is uh, fair use. Mm. who owns it particularly when it comes to images um particular works and stuff like that and the can spam stuff so there's there's some privacy things in there too um but definitely and, and it's tough i mean you know you can't necessarily go and um create your own images of elephants you know if you live in nebraska um right right it's, right there, there 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 is some stuff there but um it's complicated i think that's the that's the important thing here is and I like what Jake is saying, and I, I would just add on to that, that it just because someone shared something with you or you see it on a website um, and, and you want this is this. I see this happen on social media a lot um, where, you know, something really gets passed around, passed around, passed around. Um, and, you know, there's definitely some liability there mm -hmm. if you don't know who owns that and what the use um of it is is allowed mm -hmm. um, and and sometimes it may not seem that big of a deal you know it might just be like hey the the artist just wants a link back you know a credit something like that um but it, it can get a lot worse and and we definitely talk about that with lynn later um particularly when it comes to images um companies like shutterstock getty images mm -hmm. um it, they, they can get pretty aggressive they they, they yeah. really can so it's it's definitely worth going through making sure you understand um you know particularly when it comes to your website and your social media you know who owns those images um if there is a question of ownership um what that um you know what that usage rule is for that particular image or just in general um and i think you know this article discusses it well and and um you know, Lynn talks about it later, but the only one other thing I want to throw in here is that lawyers, you guys have an additional hoop to jump through besides mm. just copyright and can spam act and privacy disclosures and all that stuff is mm. that state bar rules are different for you um, in whatever state it's going to be. And on top of these things of who owns what and what you can post where you have the additional, um, you know, advertising standards that your state bar is, is going to be laying out for you. And so, you know, on top of, can I use this image? Um, there are, you know, is, is it ethical? Is it implying some kind of uh, relationship that doesn't exist or knowledge that, you know, we don't have, um, you know, that, that stuff can be there too. So, mm -hmm. you know, the point is, um, it, it, you know, a, a simple retweet, uh, a share, you know, having something in a, a, a YouTube video that you created as a, you know, part of a FAQ campaign or something like that. Um, it, it, it absolutely uh, can come back to get you if you're not sure, you know, where it came from, who made it and, and who says who can use it. And to, to this point of saying, I can get away with it. It doesn't matter. Um, no one's watching. The the idea of the images, I think, is good, but this can spam act. I want you to speak specifically about this. May, maybe you get a chance to buy a list of oh. potential clients or something like that, mm. right? Or yeah. or you know, referring attorneys or something like that. You get this list. Yeah, it so, seems like just explain what could happen if you use this the wrong way, and 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 what what's explain can spam act. So, I mean, in general, you know, this is, these are protections there for people. It's, it's to protect you from getting junk emails. This is, this is what happens when you buy, um, you know, buy a list, like Jake said, um, you're, you essentially the rule says, and I'm sure I'll get, you know, all kinds of follow up on this because I'm not being in depth about it, but you can't just 
send people emails, uh, mass emails, if they did not specifically say it was okay to send them emails, right? That's the, that's the bottom line. Um, and on top of that, even if people do get on your list, um, you have to follow certain rules as well. So you have to give them a, a you know, a clear way to unsubscribe. Um, and if they do unsubscribe or opt out, um, you have to, to honor that request within a certain amount of time. Um, you can't, um, the subject lines, I this one, this one tripped me up for a little bit because, um, you know, it's the, again, I think the state bars are going to do that, but your, your subject line and content have to kind of jive. So you can't send, you know, I can't send you, uh, an email, you know, about the latest legal marketing tips and you open it up and it's, you know, full of links to my Amazon affiliate site or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you can't really do that, but, wow. um, you know, I, I, I think, you know, email marketing in particular, um, is still very much the wild west. Um, and, and I think it's pretty much, you know, just like Jake said or earlier, I said, I'm not, who's going to catch me. They're not going to know. Um, and that does happen a little bit because, Unfortunately, you know, people break these rules all the time mm -hmm. uh, on such a large scale level yeah, that enforcement becomes, you know, very difficult, but you know, it, it only takes one. I mean, it really does. Right. Like, this is, you're talking serious legal trouble. Um, so, well, and on, and, and it's all on the other side of a quick fix, mm -hmm. an easy idea, you know, um, I don't have to pay for this. It's free. Well, maybe pay now so you don't have to pay later. And a lot and, of lawyers are like, of course, I, I yeah. explain this to my clients all the time. But when it comes to setting up their own marketing, you know, we talk later with Lynn, there's not only this idea of I'll get away with it or no one's watching, but there's also this idea of I don't deserve fancy stuff. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we yeah. don't even ha like, I, I like that there's better versions, but I, I yeah, I don't yeah. even. Well, and, I, and I think lawyers are, are a little bit exposed here too, because there's a lot of services and a lot of you know, referral, you know, quote, I'm, I'm using air quotes right here, referral, um, networks that, that kind of right. hype this, you know, and, and, and really it's, it's like sales leads and you right. don't know when they You're, pass right. this along, what they did to get those right. emails and if it's okay, you know, so that's the point. So yeah. figuring it out where these things come from, it's not just a quick fix. You want to be able to cover your assets before they get taken away from you. Um, Lynn talks about it. This article here on neilpatel.com is brilliant. Um, I, we suggest you check it out. Um, but really, if you're looking for some good advice, a nice interview with some classy people, uh, you don't have to go too far. You just have to stick around because it's coming up next. Lawson continues. But first, a word from our sponsor. Since 1999, ConsultWebs has been helping law firms connect with clients on the web, connect digital marketing success with firm success, and connect their business goals to proven strategies that help them get the most out of their legal marketing. Go to ConsultWebs.com to learn more. And now, a Lawson interview. Lynn Elioff is a life coach, online entrepreneur, and an internet business lawyer whose mission is to show business owners like us how to cover our assets online without having to spend a lot of money on legal fees. She's the founder of CoverYourAssetsOnline.com, which is offering a do-it-yourself legal toolkit so that entrepreneurs can protect not only their business assets, but their homes, cars, and investments. We may think it could never happen to us, but as she says, the smaller the business, the bigger the risk. Lynn, welcome to Lawsome. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, we're just so excited to have you here, too. So um, to this Cover Your Assets, oh, it's brilliantly <laughs> named. Can, can you explain where this idea came from? You could have just opened a regular law firm, you know, if you're uh, a lawyer. Why, why were you so fancy with this? I could not have opened my own law. Well, you know what? I actually thought of that. And then two of my law school buddies did that. 
And I went in uh, to work with them on a contract basis. And I'm like, no, thank you. This isn't <laughs> going to work for me. No way. And so I, I, you know, I was never a good employee or anything like that. I had to be my own boss. So I went online and I thought, let's explore what I could do here. And then it, this whole new world opened up to me called the internet uh, that I had no real, I mean, I wasn't online for anything before. And then I realized all these online business owners had no idea how exposed they were because they, no one was talking about this. So I thought that was a great opportunity for me to go in and create Cover Your Assets Online, where I was teaching uh, people how to protect themselves and their businesses and to stay out of legal hot water. Mm. And so you, it's it's just, you go into something and you see a problem and it was identified. I mean, how bad is this? I mean, what are some of these common legal issues that that you saw that, that they were happening? Was it just online or, I mean, people are making tons of this bad decisions. <laughs> well, I think online is where people think they can catch a break, whether it's, you know, from starting their own business and all aspects of it. Oh, I can just do it myself. And I'm so small. No one's going to even notice me. Uh, but it's so true that these people that kind of work in the backside of the internet lurking, the dark side rather, and the small business owner is easy pickings, easy prey. And that's where we think, oh, I'm too small. No one's going to notice me. But all the big firms, all the really big businesses that are online, they've lawyered up. They've got everything covered. So they're protected. It's the smaller businesses that are not protected. And and so there's this false sense of security. And so I'm here to tell you that ain't going to work for you. And you don't want to mess with that or even take the risk. For example, uh, someone that I know, an acupuncturist, uh, went online with his business. He invested twenty two thousand dollars in a product and a whole, you know, a whole amazing um, website and the whole nine yards. He goes online within a day of going online. He gets a letter, a cease and desist letter saying, take it all down because this is trademark infringement and copyright infringement. We've already got this business going. So this guy had no idea that he should have checked online first to see if there were any trademarks or copyrights that he needs to be aware of. And he had to take the whole thing down and rebrand and start again. So 22 grand out the window. Another mistake that people commonly make is that they think, oh, if it's on the internet, it's free. So they'll take images and use them uh, on their websites or in their products or ads or whatever it is. And they think, you know, that it's royalty free. <laughs> and what happens is uh, Getty Images comes knocking and says, uh, you owe us a few thousand dollars for use of that image that we never gave you permission to use. And oh my goodness, people will then call me and say, what do I do? I got this letter. I'm supposed to pay $10,000. This woman had all these images on her website. She was a doctor. She set up, had someone, a web developer, make a website for her. It was absolutely beautiful. She went live and then she was hit with this notice that she will owe them $16,000 for use of the images because the guy who put the images on just put the images up there and she thought that was okay and it was not Ooh, boy paul talk about it we've been through this i mean we build websites we've done that before yeah uh, and i i don't want to yeah i could do an entire episode on getty images um yeah who are kind of the playground bully i would say <laughs> um <laughs> They have such a machine there. We've definitely run into it um, and, and successfully defended ourselves, I, I will say, um, but definitely run into it where they, and it wasn't thousands, it was like tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and it's, and one time I, I think they actually came after us for one of our own images. Um, that oh, we really? Hadn't, so, yeah, yeah. 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 It's crazy. You guys, that's the thing. People will pay. Um, and you guys know not to and to defend yourselves, but some people will just pay it. And I said, well, first of all, do you know, it may not have even been Getty. It could be anybody just claiming you're using my images. And I'm saying, did you ask for proof <laughs> that they were the legal copy or trademark holder or copyright for the image in this case? 
there's no checking. It's like taken at face value. I'm like, no, you don't just pay it. And yeah. Lynn, same thing for music, right? I mean, same thing for a uh, B-roll video. I mean, Absolutely. is this all that all stuff? Of that. Oh all of gosh. that stuff. Wow. Same thing for using excerpts from a book and all of that stuff where you think, mm. oh, you know, I'll give attribution that will cover my assets. And it does not. You need permission from mm. the copyright holder. Mm. Well, and you've got I've, I, I got your checklist and, and step two, the 46 steps master checklist. Yep. Uh, step two is know the law. No, um, no, no. And, yeah. and I think, but I think what we're talking about right here is that because, you know, people are going to come after you. And if you don't know that, that like, Hey, you know what? They're wrong. You can right. defend yourself. You do have recourse. Um, you, like you just said, they'll be like, Oh, well, I guess I owe them money, you know, write yeah. them a check. Right. Yes. I think that, that that's the first thing that people think is that because they don't know the law, they don't even know what they are entitled, what action they can take to defend themselves. So they just pay and people are making money off of entrepreneurs that don't know what they're doing. Their head is in the sand and that's just so scary. So my mission is to let people know that they have rights too and that there is a way to fight back. Yeah, well, and this isn't a... Sorry, go ahead, Jake. Well, I, well, I'm, I'm wondering what are those ways that they can fight back besides just paying for images? My, my whole thought here is that a lot of businesses don't see themselves as media presences. Like you can create your own media, take your own pictures, you know, do, you know, create your own music or, or kind of fund your own content marketing initiatives, create your own IP. I think a lot of law firms would be happy to have something worth trademarking, but I think that maybe they think not only because they're small, that there's no risk, but also I'm not worth, I'm not worth it. I'm not worth investing to make good quality content. Um, do you, do you kind of, do you see where I'm coming from? Cause I, I don't think that people think I can get away with it. I think they say, uh, I don't deserve custom images or I don't deserve custom music or Ooh. custom video. I mean, it's I, a, yeah, it's a mindset. It's, right. You, you get into, yeah, yeah, definitely. Do, does, um, am I on to something there, Lynn? I think you're on to something. Absolutely. Okay, great. <laughs> well, I do. I think people a lot. I mean, I think that's a big problem with people who start their businesses. They have these great intentions, great ideas, but then self-doubt will show up, whether it's in the form of their content or advertising or whatever. And then they start to second guess themselves and then they start doing crazy things. Um, not the least of which is to, you know, borrow quote unquote images that they are not entitled to use, but also to just not even want to put themselves out there, like to right. put their own images, their own face to the product. That's what people really want to see. And you can create some great images just using yourself and your content. I think people underestimate um, the, the power of doing that. Oh yeah. And I think you um are uh, we, we we need to underline this here because you're doing this on so many levels. So this right uh, the the and I'm using the checklist as an example. Um, but here here's a thing where you are putting yourself out there. You know you're really saying, hey, if if you want to start a business, here's this free thing. It's great content. And at the same time, you must get clients from people who go through this thing. Be like forty six forty six steps. I can't handle this. <laughs> Help me out. Um, <laughs> And on top of it, you can advise people on, you know, how you can create this kind of content. I mean, this is, uh, we, uh, Jake and I have probably gone over this at, at least 20 or 30 times on the show that, you know, if you provide valuable information um, that people can, can use and you establish yourself um, as an expert who they can trust, they'll hire you. I mean, and that's exactly what this checklist is doing. It's so great. Um, so do you have like, do you have a conscious kind of uh, uh, a method or, or uh, a approach to, to these different, I mean, you have, you have a podcast, you have, a, you know, coaching on top of being a lawyer. Yeah. Um, that's a great how question. Do you, how, how do you, do, you do this? These, yeah. How do you put these different things together right. and, and make something that is, um, 
you know, usable on, on these different levels and in these different applications. I mean, it's just totally. brilliant. brilliant. Well, you know, thank you guys. I think that's, that's very nice of you to say. And I really appreciate that. I think what it is, is that, and I talk about this a lot. I think there are three things that you need to take your business online. And I, I speak uh, primarily to women, uh, went coaches and I'm helping them set up their business, but this works for men, of course. And you need three things. You need guts, you need grit and you need grace. You need the guts to put yourself out there to say, you know, I've got this great idea and come hell or high water, I want to make it something, I believe in it, and then have the guts to put it out there. Number two, the grit to, you know, get back up more times than you fall down. I think that is the true measure of an entrepreneur who stays the course and makes mistakes and gets back up and tries again and tweaks it and then fixes it and makes it better every single time. And then third, the grace to say, heck, you know, uh, I'm not going to beat myself up every time I get it, quote unquote, wrong, because I don't think we get it wrong. We're just finding our way. And I think if you can just stick with those three things and put blinders on to other people's comments mm. and opinions about what you should or shouldn't do, I think you can build an amazing business for yourself. And that's what I've had to learn to do. I think the hardest part is keeping those blinders on mm. and not listening to everyone else's opinion about what you should be doing with your business and mm. your life. This is all about me in my case. It's all about you in your case. And if mm -hmm. we can just stick to that without apology, I think, you know, it's, it's so fun to be an entrepreneur when you yeah. can do it like that. Yeah. Well, and also to get back towards legal marketing, like if, if you do find this mindset to have the guts and the grit and the grace to set out, and then you put those blinders in place, um, how do you select the right tactics to get to the business goals that you want? I mean, uh, a lot of people would put those blinders on and maybe they'd stuff cotton in their ears as well. And they wouldn't be able to listen to the feedback and they would just go full steam into creating this full sensory podcast experience, uh, you know, video chat, live stream, Periscope, blog, newsletter, hybrid thing. That's just like, uh, it's so horrible, but they just feel it. Like, how do you help lawyers in specific cut down and find like, sh you know, do they do a blog? Do they do a book? Do they do a video? I mean, how do tactically, how do you apply this? So I don't work with a lot of lawyers specifically, but it would be the same idea who mm -hmm. anyone who wants to, you know, whatever it is that they're doing, you really, I mean, really, and I know we hear this all the time, but you really have to know who you are and what you're good at and what message you are putting out in the world. Because too many people will come online or open mm. up a business, like they mm. could even open up a bricks and mortar. Mm. You go in the store and it's loaded with a million things. Mm. And if I go into a store like that, I just turn around and walk out. So like, who are you and mm. what do you stand for and what is your message? And that's where, you know, the first hit will come. Well, I don't know. I don't have a message. Who am I to have a message? Who am mm -hmm. I to open a business right. and all that? And that's where you really have to stay focused and on course because you deserve to have your own business if that's what you want. And you, but you've got to go through, look, I always say starting your own business is an AFCO, another freaking growth opportunity because <laughs> it will test every part of you with self doubt and whether you're good enough and all that stuff. And so you just have to go through the hoops. You have to jump through the hoops. It's deep emotional work, um, but it will grow you up and it can, it can make you, um, it can give you an amazing experience and an amazing life. And I don't say that lightly because I've been through it. I have mm -hmm. fallen down <laughs> so mm -hmm. many times, mm -hmm. um, but I get back up. I, I, I don't know any other way but to get back up because I don't want to get to the end of my life and say, damn it, I stayed down. Mm -hmm. How could I have done that to myself? So I don't ever want that to happen. So I just keep getting up and keep trying. And when I hit it, it's uh, awesome. And I just grow from there. I love it. So, so setting, setting sites on specific activities. I mean, you have a book, you have this consulting agency, you have this website, you have these awesome online tools, you have these checklists, you have all these things. 
what's your advice um, for like one thing our audience could do, you know, today to get their content marketing together? You know, I mean, like there's so many different options um, besides just the mindset, besides just being t- t- tenacious, you know, in, in, right. in your, your, your pursuit of this goal. I mean, how, you know, sort of framing from your experience, what do you think their best bet is to get content marketing and kind of content together? Um, I mean, besides just reading all your stuff, because of course that's the, of course that's the answer. Yeah. Step one is subscribe to everything. Like, Lynn does. Exactly right. are incredible. I, I wish the, the, honestly, the one, the 46 steps for starting your own business. Like I'm looking at this and going through it. And I'm like, yep. Learn that uh, the hard way. That yeah, one it's too. A, yep, there's the point. That. That's what I'm saying. And that, that's sort of like, if there was one piece, you know, yeah. for, for content marketing, just the publication of, of ideas, yeah. What's what's your advice there? So I think my advice would be not to tell you to do what worked for me, but to find out what you actually love doing, because then it becomes easy. Like if you're not. So I have a radio background, right? So podcasting comes easily for me. Um, I was in, uh, you know, radio and television news. So writing and podcasting, I love that stuff. So mm-hmm. I can do that. But maybe you're a writer and uh, or you're a would-be writer. And so maybe you start with your blog. But whatever you do, the key is not to pick the right thing. The key is to do the consistent thing. Because your first <sighs> blog post or your first podcast episode is not going to be perfect. It's not going to have all the answers because not until you do 20, 50 podcasts or write that many blog posts or do so many interviews on podcasts, will you really start to get into your groove? And I think that's where people make the biggest mistake is that they're afraid to pick because they're not going to be perfect at it. So they pick nothing. So I'm saying, what you know, what turns your crank? Like what, what works for you? Is it a podcast? If so, then commit to doing 50 episodes of a podcast come hell or high water that you commit to it and stick with it. You will learn so much about who you are and what you like and the topic. You will become even more expert in your topic. So that did that answer your question or do you want to <laughs> God, no i mean it didn't even an- it answered it and then it sat it down for a long dinner and then it went out to movies and then they like 20 years passed by and uh-huh. then that idea had kids and then those kids went to college there you go. i yeah, mean that was good that was good that was beautiful oh, um, thanks you guys so i i guess to kind of lean on the the one thing right now um mm. Specifically talking about covering assets. Yeah. Um, do you like, is there one thing that everybody should go and check right now, whether you're a lawyer or anyone, like anyone who has some kind of online presence or, or something like that? Like, what's one thing people should do right now to, to cover their assets? Okay. Can I give you three? Do you give us as many as you got <laughs> okay. based on of that course. Last 46. Answer. Talk as long as you like. You have. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, choose a business name that you know is not. Not just your business, but a product name, any kind of name before you even buy a dot com. Make sure that no one else is um, is the rightful owner of it in some other form as a dot net or maybe it's got a little twist on it. But don't just assume you can use a name uh, because you don't want to have to go back and redo it. So number one, set up uh, and choose the right business name. Then a business entity eventually because a sole prop, you're not protected at all. You are the business. The business is you. Finkel is Einhorn. Einhorn is Finkel. Like you don't want to just stay a sole prop. <laughs> you want to become an LLC or an S Corp at some point because that puts a brick wall between you and your business. So your assets are then more covered. Um, you want insurance. People think, oh, I don't need insurance. Oh, yes, you do. And make sure you get the right kind of insurance. Um, for example, if you are a coach, then you want uh, liability insurance because liability is out there. And people, you may think I'm doing everything right. People can sue me, but they can't hurt me. But the worst thing that can happen <laughs> is that you have to defend yourself at all in a lawsuit. Lawsuits are horrible. You don't want that. You don't want to expose yourself even to the possibility. You want to reduce the risk as much as possible. Then on your website, you want three 
key things on your website. You want a privacy policy. Don't argue. You need a privacy policy. That is it. You need a link to it in the footer of your website. Next, you need a disclaimer that says, here's what I do, here's what I don't do, and you need a terms of service, which says, uh, this is my material on this website, you're free to use it, but don't steal from me, don't take it, these things are not free for you to use. So that puts people on notice that you, uh, this is your content, and you're setting the rules, your playground, your rules, and a copyright notice. I mean, your work is copyrighted anyway, but always, always put a copyright notice on everything you create because that just gives that protects you from a defense of innocent infringement oh i had no idea and that is a defense mm. so as soon as you slap a copyright notice on your um, any of your content then that is an extra level of protection boom <laughs> well you heard it here first kids oh here here's my quick question how um how can they find i i come up with a lot of fun ideas and then i how do i look to see if somebody's taken them well you can do what i call a knockout search or you could have um someone do it or you could have a lawyer do it for you but you can pretty much do a knockout search on your own so for example let's say oh i think nike would be a really cool name for me to have for my business i go online clearly <laughs> nike's not gonna work so that knocks that one out so right away and so you can do something like that where if you if it was nike then you might think uh nike plants nike shoes nike whatever all the variations of it and see if you can find someone that owns that name in any form you want to just stay away because any kind of overlap could come back and bite you in the assets later down the line so you can do your own knockout search in google bing all those different search engines and look for it um, and see if anything pops up then you can um if you're really serious and you want to trademark something that's when i say that's one of the times where I strongly advise you get a lawyer to do uh, your trademark for you. But there's so much you can do on your own, which is why I created this toolkit, because there's a lot you can do on your own. You don't need to have a lawyer to do it for you, but you must be informed. Mm -hmm. So I have a quick question um, about doing the the knockout search, because I've done this uh, myself. Um, we, did, we did it for the podcast and everything. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are just basically domain squatting. Um, there's people who just, yeah. it's, I mean, we get into the whole IP thing, uh, all yep. that, but I mean, you know, it's, it, I mean, is it a rule of thumb? If somebody has the domain, you should go find something else regardless, you know, I mean, just, I mean, does that, does, is that in, does that indicate that someone, you know, is, is actually doing something with that name? Or if I find something, I'm like, well, I go look at their, who is, you know, they've had it registered for five years. There's no website. There's no nothing on it. They just have a registered domain name. That's it. Like, should, should you, should you pivot there or is now, there? Not necessarily because you can't own a trademark if you actually don't use the trademark in commerce. So yeah, all of those. And I've, I, this just happened to me the other day. I searched something. It's been um, it's been in, not in use, but it's been owned by someone for 10 years and there's no, excuse me, there's no website, nothing. So if I went online and started to use that name and I put a trademark notice on it, the little TM, which you can do that puts notice, the R is only when you actually are registered as the trademark owner, um, but automatically put the TM on there. Now, if they, and I'm using it, let's say I'm using using that name with the TM, I'm making money, I'm selling a product. Now they go online with the .com, I have a cause of action against them because nice. I have established that I am using that name in commerce. So it is the first to go uh, in commerce and that's what they will look at first. So just because they're holding it doesn't mean they can necessarily use it in the future if a trademark has already been established. It just means that they can hold that name <laughs> for ransom, jack up the price and hope that you will buy it from them. Yeah. And that, you know, we, we get that a lot, especially with a, a, a lot of our lawyer um, clients who may be um, pursuing like class actions or torts or something like that. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, you know, they're going to, they're going to be looking for something that maybe has uh, a drug brand name in it or something. I know that's a different thing, but um, it, it does come up quite a bit. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, it, it's crazy. The the squatting has been, um, you know, a frustration for so many people, even people like their names. That's why I always tell people, as soon as you know you're going into business online, get your name. Even if you don't plan to go into business and you have kids, I say get their names as a dot com because, uh, you know, there are, there's more than one <laughs> John Doe, right? John Doe.com. And if so, you want to grab your name now, grab the names of your kids as dot coms because the dot coms will disappear and you don't want to have to fight for it. I have um, people, clients who um, can't get their name.com. They have to add another word like um, my name.com or my name yep. coaching.com, stuff like that. So that would be something that I would recommend everyone do it's not expensive and you just hold on to it i can't get mine actually because names.com yeah. has it already uh, yeah. which is so frustrating isn't Sorry. it i know yeah that sucks yeah i love <laughs> this is so amazing the stuff that we have uncovered here oh I hope everybody is enjoying this and and i don't want anybody to i, I hope i just feel like my assets are covered here, you know. <laughs> I just feel like yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm wearing I'm not wearing chaps. These are full pants. Uh, these um, checklists, he, honestly, these checklists that we're talking about, no joke. Way uh, covered. This is absolutely a comprehensive, literally step by step. If you skip one of these things, you're in a lot of trouble. So, um, well, so to to add on to that and to and to point people towards this, how can people find you on the internet and learn more um, about covering your assets and this forty six checklist, all, all this stuff? So, coveryourassetsonline.com dot com is the is the URL. Um, you can also go to forty six steps dot com. That'll take you straight to that checklist. Um, but coveryourassetsonline.com will, will also get you there as well. And I think that is just, you know, like starting with that. And then if you are into doing it yourself, you could, you could get the toolkit and work through a lot. Like that thing is packed with so much information, or maybe you say, you know, I just, uh, I just going to hire a lawyer. It'll cost you. <laughs> a lot of money to hire a lawyer but hey if if you know yourself and you know that you're not going to do it but you need to be protected then please do that but there are things that you can do uh, you'd be amazed at what you can do like the privacy policy i have templates in there that are just you know you just plug in your name and your state and things like that it's just super easy and you put it on your website and boom it's done five questions we ask everyone what was the last book you read Oh, the last book I read. Oh, my goodness. Uh, shoot, I was just busy redoing my whole book, so that all went on hold. But I think it was a Joe Dispenza book. Um, he has a new one, but all of his books. So, yeah, Joe Dispenza. Read, nice. read his books. They're amazing. Do it, everyone, right now. Uh, number two, what is your favorite place? My favorite place? Oh, guys, I hate to sound tacky, but I love my home. We live on water and it is like I love being home and coming home. So, yeah, my home is my favorite place. There's nothing tacky about that at all. That's, okay. that's me, too. I'm with you. Really? Um, I love I love my oh, home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And specifically the kitchen. And I don't even have a really nice kitchen. I just like hanging out in there. It's fun. Um, OK, number three, what <laughs> sites, blogs, newsletters or podcasts do you regularly check in with? Uh, OK, so um, I love this is just for me now. I love Oprah. I love Goop. I love, <laughs> do you guys checked out Goop, Gwyneth Paltrow's site? Do you know? I, I haven't. <laughs> oh, man. Paul, Dude, Paul's lie, really Jake. in touch with that we stuff. We were just talking about this. You were just I'm gooped talking out. about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I listened to several uh, different business podcasts. But, I, you know, I, I like go in and out. But I love podcasts because, um, and I know everybody likes to talk about video, but I love podcasts because I could take it with me. I can take, it on, take them on a walk. I could take you guys with me on a walk. It's so much easier mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than video, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I do. Nice. Okay, here comes the tough one. If you oh, were stranded gosh. on a desert <laughs> If you were stranded on a desert island and yeah. could only pick one condiment to take with you, what would it be? 
horseradish. <laughs> Bam! No hesitation. See? That was easy. <sighs> got this. That was, that was it, easy. It'd be better wow. if I could take some mustard to be able to mix it, but um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mustard, I like you, Lynn. mustard and horseradish. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Last one. After a long day or a long week at work, how do you relax and unwind? I, well, when I can, weather permitting, I, as, as I said, I love my home. So my backyard opens up onto the water. So sitting out there, um, I guess maybe because I'm Pisces, but I find the water is so tranquil. So that's what I love to do. And then, okay, now for the cheesy answer, I love hugging my kids. That will take yeah. away every ounce of stress or whatever's bugging me. On, and I have kids that don't mind me hugging them still. So um, nice. that works. Like it really is an instant relaxer. I, I'm not one to, you know, love relaxing much. Um, but but if I do that, that would be the one thing that I just love being at home with my family, overlooking the water, and my dog, my little dog Chewy. For show notes, links, and info, go to thelawsonpodcast.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Be sure to leave us a review and rating in iTunes or wherever you find the you listen to. Until next week, stay Lawson. Awesome.